Good morning, afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> is, is, exactly is the mic saying. in there? Yeah, the mic's in there. We're back. We're back on another bus building video. And I guess I want to start by saying this. We had a switch fail. So we have one electric switch in there for the lights and it just burnt out and was just stuck on. And after thinking about it, you know, sometimes those Amazon things just aren't great. You know, I've even had an Amazon or a, a Renogy inverter switch just didn't work straight out the box, brand new. So it's like, you kind of have to keep an eye on your stuff. And you know, as we all build buses and figure out the best stuff to use, we will upgrade our stuff. So I'm gonna start looking for better switches. They're great switches. I just have had them fail over the years and I replace them and then they're fine. But that switch failed, moral of the story. We need to fix that switch. Now, Levi over here, he's gonna, be, he's gonna be helping us out till like Thursday. And we're... We're hoping to finish the inside in the yeah. next few days. Yeah, basically the we plan. We want to get it done. The plan, let's go in there and talk about it. All right, so we have, this is just a temporary countertop. And we have this cabinetry for the sink. Now, we haven't done the plumbing yet or put the water tank in, but today's mission is to finish installing the water heater that we already cut the hole, the hole for, and then framing out the rest of the cabinet for the inset stove right i feel like that's not a big mission that's kind of the main mission today and then we'll see where we're at we could do doors there we're trying to get the cabinetry done by the end of this week now to finish the cabinetry we need to finish this kitchen cabinet and then we need to start the shower stall which i think is going to be the most labor intensive thing that gets done in this bus uh, because we got to waterproof the plywood, we're gonna put FRP on the wood. So it's like if we could get that far today, that'd be great. But if we could just get the kitchen cabinet in here today, that's kind of really only the main goal and fix the switch. So we're just gonna get into the work day, start getting things done around here. Let's get it. Okay, we got the kitchen side done right there. All right, so the one thing I'm noticing is where's my drawers gonna be at, right? Because I have a sink there, so I can't do drawers there because of the plumbing. And then over here, I have the, uh, water, heater. the water heater and the plumbing there. So, I'm trying to figure that out. I'm actually going to see if the sink can go right there. Good morning. It's another day. Uh, we got... You seen what we did yesterday. And then we got, you know, this extension out to here. And I figured out where we're going to do our drawers. We're waiting on a countertop still. I ordered it. But today's mission is the shower stall. Which is going to go right here is is the plan so i'm hoping we're not going to hit our light strip 
I don't think we will, but we're gonna find out. So we need to build uh, the little enclosure that's gonna go in there, and then we need to get to waterproofing it. And I have a stainless steel shower pan from our way to Rome. I'll have a link in the description below. But basically what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna get underneath the bus and make sure that we're not gonna be hitting the frame. We have some clearance there, if that makes sense, because we gotta drill a hole through the floor for the water to drop through the floor. We don't wanna be cutting the frame of the bus. So we're gonna check that out first and hopefully everything here is gonna work out. What we're finding out is the shower pan is probably too big, <laughs> but you know, we're going to make it work. Basically what's going on is if I have the stall come all the way out to the end here, um, we're going to hit our light, right? So here's the thing, our stall walls. I mean, it's no problem. We could we could notch it out and have that light go through the stall wall, no problem, right? But I always like to build keeping in mind that things break, right? So if I bring that light through the stall wall and this has got to be fixed for any reason or the LED's got to be changed out, it'd be a nightmare to deal with at that point, right? Like it, it would just be a nightmare. Um, yeah, you'd probably, it just, it'd be hard. So it's like, I always like, I always like to build things to be able to fix it. I don't think a lot of people think like that. I don't like putting wires behind walls. Everybody likes doing that. Um, you know, cause what do you do? What do you do if the wire goes bad? You got to short in there. You got to fix it. I like, I like to make everything breakable, if that makes sense. So what I'm thinking is we might, if you look down here, we might build the stall wall out to like here or here or something like that and then i'll have a pop out shower curtain at the top and the curtain will just stay inside of this and then and then i don't gotta worry about the light and you know everything could be removed pretty easily is kind of what i'm thinking i think that's what we're gonna end up doing uh we're gonna talk about it some more and figure out our game plan so Let's, let's figure it out. One thing I want to hop in and say is I always like to get women's opinion <laughs> on design, on layout, things like that. Because as men, I hate to sound sexist, but sometimes we don't think about certain things and women just are better at thinking about it. So it's like I always try and get an opinion from a woman on anything I'm thinking just so the build can... Um, both male and female would be interested in the build if that makes sense versus if I built a very male build out a woman might not interest so whenever you're selling buses you want to make sure that it's as neutral as it can be we're gonna get Jaylena's opinion on the shower um, let's see what she has to say about it just talk to Jaylena she doesn't think I'm crazy so we're gonna make it happen all right Everybody's scared of the schoolie roof curves, not the Filipinos. I am. <laughs> He's not Filipino. <laughs> so what we did is our sheets of ply are 27 inches wide. 70 and a half is how tall it is in the ceiling-ish. Doesn't really matter because all that's going to get trimmed out. So what I do is I always get a piece of construction paper, masking paper like this. Same width as our plywood, right? And then we're going to go in there, hold it against the curve with some help. And then I'm going to trace the curve out cut the curve out, trace the curve on the ply, cut it, boom, done. You how I'm doing there? Yeah, I do get it now. Bam. Here's our tracing. I'm lining it up with the back and then this ain't going to be perfect. It's going to be in the ballpark. We're going to have to bring this in multiple times and trim it out. Now, you guys are going to be in the comment section telling me there's all kinds of tools for this and blah, blah, blah. 
let me just tell you, I've kind of done this a million times and I've used all the tools and they all don't work. So this is the best way that I found, basically by hand is the way to do it. Get yourself in the ballpark and then just kind of, you know, notch it out till it's right. That's how the Filipinos do it. $86 sheets of plywood. You'd be all right. way bad right there see? oh yeah so if you come over here you can see where it's hitting so we need to take that out So like that's perfect, bro. Yeah, because that's all the way up to here. You know, which means it's probably gonna be out to here ish. Yeah, I think that's it's pretty good. Yeah, I think that's it. If you want to talk to the camera, let me know. Alright. So I think we got it. Obviously, it's not perfect. So we're gonna have to fill that up with a caulk line. Um, but, cause we're gonna have a wall here in the back. So that's why we deleted these windows. Cause I've, I've sealed up against the windows before. And I just think it's a super leak point cause caulk lines break. So thing about doing a whole sealed shower is if a caulk line breaks you can just re-caulk it right which you can here but the water isn't going to go anywhere except for inside the stall does that make sense versus over here it can start getting in between creating mold really fast so this is how i'm going to start doing showers from now on um, and then we'll just put a nice bead of caulk here once the stall is mounted in, in inside but now we can use this as a template so we'll take our frp we'll lay this on the frp trace it out and i think what we're going to do is we're going to mount the whole stall and then we'll waterproof it in place and uh glue the frp up in place but the stall will be mounted and the shower pan will be dropped in Hey guys, I'm doing a little bit of a take over here. I don't know if Isaac's gonna include this part, but he messed up. I just had to bring it to attention. <laughs> Our cut was off by a quarter inch. A full blown sheet unusable now. How could he? <laughs> Let's see if that makes it in. been talking much but Levi and I three-quarter framed the shower saw right and what we're gonna do now is set the shower pan in to use it to kind of line all this up and I'm gonna start tacking in along the floor and then we will tack this brace across and then go up into the ceiling and then I'm gonna be 
and then I'm gonna mask it off and I'm gonna red guard it. Get it waterproofing and that'll be it for the night. And then we'll we'll drill the hole for the drain tonight. And Levi's gonna cut the FRP and tomorrow the red guard should be dried. And we'll just use some contact glue, slap the FRP up, boom, caulk all of our edges, and we have a waterproof shower saw. Easy breezy. High five. <laughs> All right. It's gonna need a light in there. Have we made it all the way through? Yes, sir. Our hole for plumbing? Yes, sir. Let us take a look through that hole, guys. Haha, <laughs> you can see all the way through. All right. I'll now we got to get that cleaned up. We are now dropping the shower fan. There's a big booty in the way. It is flat. Oh, sorry. Oh, that's looking good. It's flat finally. Now we can see how actually flush it is against. We even built us a little, nice little stand for it. Oh no, Isaac's showering. <laughs> I'm gonna get underneath it and see. Uh, it's looking good how though. It looks. Absolutely. Feels good. Oh yeah. Then we're just gonna put some sick flex in these edges and call it done. Sweet. Okay, so now we're splitting up. Levi's gonna go cut some FRP. And I'm gonna start masking and red guarding this stall. Let's get on it. Y'all, that's it for the end of the work day. <laughs> Shower stall is massive. You will definitely be comfortable in there. <laughs> I don't think I like them that big, but you know, that's a preference thing. Now, we got the stall mounted. So the stall is mounted. It's waterproof. We're gonna let it dry overnight, and then we're gonna come back tomorrow morning. We're gonna hang the FRP up with some contact cement, and then we're gonna drop the pan. Boom. It's all done. And then I need to order the pop out uh, curtain rod and shower curtain. But that's gonna be it for the end of the work day. It took all day to do that stall, but it's kind of a mission. Hope y'all learned something. I'll see you tomorrow. Hello. Welcome back to another build day. Now we got the red guard on our shower stall last night. It's all dried up. So I'm gonna unmask it. And Levi and I are gonna throw some FRP up on there with some contact cement. I'm gonna put a light in there because it's dark in that stall. And then we're gonna cock it all up. Shower stall done. Our goal for the day is to get the shower stall Omni Domni 100% done and do the overheads. So we could do the closed cabinet above the bed in the back for closed storage. And then a couple of open shelves throughout the rest of the bus we'd be solid that's our goal for the day i guess we'll both find out where we get but let's get into it i should mention this actually if you guys have been watching this channel for a while you know that we had really bad wildfires at the, around the shop last year like literally the wildfires were on all sides of the shop and it's kind of that way again like we're on evacuation notice and the cedar creek fire is only like 10 miles away from us right now and they're saying the wind is supposed to shift towards us tomorrow and the next day. Um, so we're a little worried about that and we're keeping an eye on it. But uh, we'll, I, guess, I guess we'll all find out what happens with that too. A difficult time on this one. So we're hoping it's going to work out. You know what I'm saying? But we're both going to find out. 
All right, cool. So the reason I'm re-sanding the edges is I'm just cleaning the red guard off of the wood edges because I really like the wood edges. So I have the red guard sealing the inside of the stall and then I'm going to polyurethane all of the exposed wood edges and keep that really cool clean wood look. So everything in that stall will be either sealed with red guard or polyurethane including the roof but we're not doing polyurethane today. So that's what I'm doing. So there's actual FRP glue, but it's like a giant container that's like 70 bucks. And I didn't want to spend that much money for like not that much material. I did read on the old Google about any contact cement working. So I bought this, which is DAP Weldwood contact cement, right? This is in a can, you gotta like wipe it on. Seems like kind of a pain in the butt. And then I found these spray, which I'm thinking is gonna be the easy way to do this. So I got two cans and I'm hoping it's gonna be enough. Now I just read the directions. Apparently we're supposed to shake the can for one to two minutes. And then we're supposed to have all surfaces clean and then spray both sides. So the shower stall and the FRP and let it set for about five to 10 minutes till it's tacky and then we set it up. Well, I'm thinking what we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna lay out all of the FRP panels in here and I'll have Levi spray in here, I'll spray in there. So they're both getting applied at the same time. We'll wait for it to get tacky and we'll pray that it all works out. We got Levi, we got Levi shaking that glue up. <laughs> all right, as you can tell, I kind of remasked this and then kind of hung some tape over because we're going to be spraying glue and I'm just trying to catch because I have to get the glue out to the edge. I'm trying to catch as much as the glue as I can to make less of a mess. So I got the stall remasked for glue and I think we decided that we're not going to spray all walls at one time. I think we're going to try and do one wall at a time, which is going to slow us down. But just so, you know, the glue doesn't set up more than it should. And because if we run into a problem on one wall and we got glue drying on both walls, it's going to go bad. So you only have like a certain window. So I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to at least do one wall first. We're going to do the easy one in the back. And again, I'm going to spray in here. Levi's going to spray out there. And we'll go from there. Maybe we can do these two walls together. I don't know, but this is how we're going to try and do it. You want the entire thing covered? Oh, yeah. We don't want this coming off. Okay. Ready? Which way is the top? Mama Maya. Let go. and start pushing, pushing down. I'm gonna have to let go. Here. And it's good taped up. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm thinking about telling them how to get started and make sure I'm going to do one. Behind me. Careful. I'm going to line. I see what you're trying to do. Hey girl, show me what you're working with. Take yourself. <laughs> By the way, Isaac in this part of the video is the girl. Show me what you're working with. Oh, I put that in perfectly. Nice. Hey, the Hobo Joe, what you working on there? I'm hanging the hooks for a light. You know what I'm saying? Nice. Now show the people what you've done. So, 
got these hooks right here. We're gonna hang our 12 volt light up in here and then we're gonna run our wire through here, back through there, and then cock the wire in the seam. Now, that makes it to where we could still, if we need to repair it, rip the cock line out, change everything out. Like I said, I like to build everything to break, as bad as that sounds. But things break, and you don't want to destroy your build to have to fix something. So, we're going to hang the light, run the wire, and keep this party going. Ladies and gentlemen, we got light and the shower stall. So now, it's time for Isaac to get We're going to wire it to the switch, cock it in. All right, there it is. Shower stall is inside. Stainless steel shower pan is mounted. Our shower light is in. And the whole thing is cocked and waterproof. So the stall is pretty much done. The last thing we gotta do is just take some polyurethane and seal that wood up in there. But it's done. I really like the stainless steel shower pan. I'll put a link that's from our way to Rome. And then I just need to use this thing. Oh, yeah, I need to mount the uh, the pop out uh, shower rod that I had in the Vin Diesel build as well. And then the curtain will come out and fill that gap right there. But yeah, it's done. So I'm hyped about it. And you know, I don't know. I don't know. It's cool. I like the FRP looked really good till I did the cock lines. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I just don't think there was another way I could have did it better. So it's cool, it's done, moving on. Good morning. We are on level one evacuation for fires. I'm not sure if I mentioned that in the videos yet, but in this video yet, but uh, I keep getting notifications and my friends keep tagging me. The fire's 10 miles over there, which I still can't see it yet but you can see the horizon and the smoke in the sky. So this is Friday, Saturday, and it's supposed, base, basically everything online is saying that the wind is supposed to shift towards town today, and today's like very, very dangerous. So we're gonna take a couple days, pack the family up, and we're gonna go over to Bend. We got a hotel over there for a couple days. And we're just gonna leave Dodge while it's a little bit sketchy. You know what I'm saying? Just, just to be safe. But one of the other things I want to show you. As you can see, this little lean-to back here. Uh, we have, you know, the Project Bus, Minion, Jaylena's Bus. And that's all wood. So if the fire comes over here, that's going to all catch on fire. The shop is actually all made out of cinder blocks. So it's not flammable. And there's no trees like kind of around the shop area. So I think before we leave town today, I'm going to move all the vehicles away from the wood structure and put them all out here. So I'm going to do that. And then, uh, yeah. And then we're going to close this video out. I'll show you Brewster, which is what this is about, but you know. So it is. Ember Wild, lovely lady, Jaylena. As you can tell, we are evacuating. <laughs> so this started as a build video and the fires got really bad. Today and tomorrow is supposed to be the worst days. They're saying the whole town where we're at needs to be ready to go, so. Isaac and I were planning on having a date night anyways, and so we were leaving, and Levi was gonna stay here with Ember, and we decided to just take them with us because we're gonna be a little, a couple hours away, <clears throat> and we don't want him to be here and have to evacuate with her if they enforce that. So we're just gonna take them with us, and um, I don't think it'll come to that, but you just never know, yeah. so. Yeah, and so I moved all of the buses 
out from underneath the wood structure. So they're in the middle of the gravel a lot. So if a fire passes through here, we're in the best position we can be. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna head over to Ben for a few days, check in, on, check in on it and see what's going on. Yeah. So we're all heading over and that's gonna be the end of this video. So as always, if you guys are here every single week, so much love for you guys. If this is the first time you're checking out one of these videos, if you like bus stuff, you might want to consider subscribing. So, see you guys in another video. This is Isaac and the Fam Bam signing out. Uh, peace out.